Closed captioning is brought to you by Aaron Saxon Associates. You're watching the KOEM Morning News on Fox 14. Right now at 7, efforts are being made to save a stretch of Route 66. Our very own Samantha Walker shares what those plans may be and concerns that some residents have. Also, a bridge in Baltimore collapses after a ship hits a support column. And we've got ourselves a cloudy and cold day out there. We'll have a look at that forecast to get you out the door coming up. The four states most watched news starts now. Good morning and welcome to the KOEA Morning News on Fox 14. I'm Elise Noe. And I'm Chris Warner just after 7 a.m. on this Tuesday morning and it is a cold Tuesday Freezing morning. out there. I am Layer not a up. fan of it. Yeah. Neither am I. I, I haven't had to bring my coat for a while, and I like that because yeah. it's, just, it's one more thing I have to grab. Right. And I know it sounds crazy, but after being here for at yeah, 3 a.m., by yes. the end of the day, my coat's the last thing I want to have exactly. to worry about. You know? I totally but get it. You're going to have to have one this morning, and uh, definitely definitely cold start. Well, uh, look at your forecast here in just a moment, and uh, some efforts underway yes. to save a part of Route 66. Yes, driving near Miami, you may have seen a part of Route 66 called Ribbon Road, but a proposal to repair that piece of the iconic highway has some people concerned. KOM Samantha Walker explains. In the future, you'd drive by it and it, it really wouldn't stand out as anything but just a regular old road in the middle of the country, and that, that's what we're trying to avoid. The historic Route 66 spans more than 2,000 miles across the country, but a three-mile stretch in Ottawa County that is only nine feet wide called the Ribbon Road is causing debates. Uh, and we were concerned with the fact that the plan that uh, was selected for the road involved destroying what's left and basically recreating it putting a replica in place where this original pavement has sat for over 100 years. While the road is officially in Ottawa County, there are multiple agencies involved in the discussions, including the Association, Miami City and Ottawa County officials, and the Oklahoma Department of Transportation. Um, so there's been different views on how that should be preserved. Um, our view as a city is to preserve it as is and keep those original pieces of the ribbon road. Uh, milling them we feels like kills them. The last proposal regarding repairs to Ribbon Road was released in February and still included the prospect of milling and relaying the road. The Oklahoma Route 66 Association released a petition online to urge officials to work on patching and preserving the road rather than replicating it. We absolutely would like to see it repaired so that you know, the, the bumps and bruises this road has over the last uh, 100 plus years, it, it, it's earned those. It should be able to keep those. Miami Mayor Bless Parker says the public response to the proposal about Ribbon Road has not gone unnoticed. Because there is so much um, going on right now with emails, with phone calls, um, and a lot of people are getting these. So I think they're gonna, they've decided to bring everybody back to the table again to make sure we get this right. Reporting in Ottawa County, Samantha Walker, KOAM News. Miami officials say they have another meeting scheduled to discuss the future of Ribbon Road. I know historic Route 66, a big deal, especially right through here. Of course, um, yes. And I know, if I'm not mistaken, there's still some other portions of the original pavement out there um, not really used. Yeah. And some of it not even drivable or accessible, but uh, it's great to try and preserve yeah. what we can. It'll be interesting to see what they do. For yeah, sure. absolutely. Yeah. Something to keep an eye on over the next uh, several weeks. Hopefully they're able to preserve yes, it. Hopefully it's tough, That'd be but great. hopefully they can. And uh, right now the cold weather preserving everything because it is frigid outside. Yeah. Let's look outside real quick. Uh, this is our camera on top of the Cornell Complex, downtown Joplin. It's cloudy, it is breezy, it is cold. It is all of those things out there as we get this day underway. Look at the camera, 32nd and range line, waving around in the wind. We've had those winds gusting upwards 30, 35 miles an hour out there. So not only is the air temperature cold, so you're sitting at freezing Joplin and in Pittsburgh, and we've got temperatures at or even a little below freezing in some cases. We're in the low 30s across the region. Then you factor in those gusty winds we were talking about and it gets colder yet. When, take a look at the wind chills now. Winds have increased a bit. Look at the update on these wind chills. Teens everywhere. Low to mid teens at that. So we're talking wind chills that are about 20 degrees colder than the air temperature. 
and we're already about 20 degrees colder than where we were yesterday morning. So it is a bitterly cold start to the day. Unfortunately, we're not going to do a lot of warming. We're going to be cloudy. We're going to be breezy. The only piece of good news is as we had later into the afternoon, evening and eventually the overnight, those winds will ease up, which is fantastic. But highs about 45 degrees today. A few peaks of sunshine here and there. Otherwise, mostly cloudy skies. So today, no good news, but good news on the horizon as the warm weather will return to the area. We'll take a look at all of those details in your full forecast, and that's coming up in just a few more minutes. Elise. Thanks, Chris. Well, a developing story in Maryland this morning. A portion of the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore has collapsed after a large boat collided with it. At least seven people have been reported in the river. Two have been pulled out with one in critical condition. A video posted on X showed a large vessel crashed into the bridge, catching on fire and causing multiple vehicles to fall into the water below. The Baltimore mayor and the county executive said emergency personnel were on scene and rescue efforts were underway. The Maryland Transportation Authority posted that all lanes were closed. The Kansas State Fire Marshal says a second person has died from last week's apartment fire in Chanute. Officials say 90 year old Jolivan Haymaker died from severe injuries in the hospital on Saturday. Haymaker is the second victim of Thursday's Cornerstone Apartments fire. The first is 22 year old Kaylin Jones, who was found dead at the scene. Seven other residents of the building were injured, but have since been released from the hospital. The fire marshal also determined the cause of the fire to be accidental, saying it started due to carelessly discarded smoking materials on a balcony. Joplin police investigate a deadly shooting. They say started with a reported disturbance. It happened just before 10 yesterday morning at Hillbilly Pumping on 1845 Pump Lane. Authorities say someone reported a disturbance. When officers arrived, they found a 37 year old Travis Wyrick of Joplin dead on the property. No arrests have been made in this case, but police say there is no threat to the public. A Joplin murder suspect pleads not guilty. Authorities say Scott Burleson stabbed and killed Seth Langford of Carl Junction. The incident happened on March 2nd. Burleson faces charges of second degree murder, first degree robbery and two counts of armed criminal action. One in seven people face hunger in the Ozarks. That's why Ozarks Food Harvest is thankful for an annual special Easter time donation yesterday. Opal Foods out of Neosho donated more than 200,000 eggs to the charity. Fresh eggs are one of the most requested items from the food bank because they have high protein content, nutrition and versatility. Ozarks Food Harvest says it's difficult to get protein dense foods and this donation will be a huge help. Storing is not the issue and distributing is really not the issue. A lot of these eggs will be out by the end of this week um, before Good Friday even. So it takes a lot of food to feed a third of the state, which is what Ozarks Food Harvest does. We're thrilled for this and they're going to be on tables by the end of this week. Opal Foods has been making this donation since 2008. And those are our top stories this half hour. Coming up next, Pastor Aaron Schumann and Chris Hicks invite us for some pancakes this is Sunday. And later we will hear how a group in Washington State are helping kids find their inner musician. You're watching the KOA Morning News on Fox 14. From the moment you call region. Quality, compassionate. Quality, compassionate, affordable care. Well, welcome back. The Faith Lutheran Church in Pittsburgh hopes you're hungry this Saturday. Pastor Aaron Schumann and Chris Hicks are with us to invite you to the pancake feed and Easter egg hunt. Welcome to you both. Thanks so Thank much you. for joining us this morning. So if you'd like to talk to me a little bit about the pancake feed and the Easter egg hunt going on this weekend. Sure. So we are having our annual Easter egg hunt and pancake feed. It starts at 10 a.m. Okay. We'll have pancakes from... 10 to 10 30 and then at 10 30 we will have our egg hunt um we have 14 or uh, 14 or 15 000 <laughs> eggs out oh, there wow. this year That's for kiddos incredible. to pick up yeah <laughs> so it'll be a great time we have a ton and we have an area roped off for the younger kiddos okay um as well as five baskets yeah that we are raffling off 
this, this year. Each one has a different theme. Okay, so wonderful. So it's kind of exciting too. Yeah, can you talk to me a little bit about the development and inspiration for this event, given that Easter is on Sunday? Can you just talk to me a little bit more about that? Yeah, so so the reason we do the Easter egg hunt is because we want to get people familiar with our with our campus that we have by by while we're a quarter mile north of, of Pickler's Chicken Annie's and and obviously what we're here for is is we're here to, to serve our community now with just a safe place for for kids to get out and enjoy enjoy another opportunity to go pick up Easter eggs but then on Sunday to come back and if you don't have a church home to to come and join us to hear the good news of Jesus and and to to worship our Savior with us which oh. would be absolutely wonderful. Wonderful. And then can you talk to me a little bit about the Mommy and Me event as well? Absolutely. So like Pastor said, we're trying to reach out. Um, we created a program for uh, it's a safe environment. They are one hour educational playmates. Okay. Um, we have them um, on the second and fourth Tuesday and Wednesday of each month. So moms can come and it's open to dads, grandmas, any adult caregiver. Um, we come, we start with a story, and then we have different centers, arts and crafts all around that theme. Wonderful. And it's awesome. The kids get to play. Yes. And the moms. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <get to> play <laughs> so um, it's a, a great program, and we would love everyone to come. It's completely free. Um, Tuesday evenings, we have our program from six to seven and then wednesday mornings nine to ten wonderful well thank you so much for joining us thank this morning us. be sure to check out the church this weekend and if you would like more information you can visit their website faithpittsburgh.com stick around we'll be right back thank you so much. Welcome back to the KOAM Morning News 716 now on this Tuesday morning and take a look at our camera on the Cornell Complex. It is breezy, it is cloudy, and it is quite cold out there. MoDOT camera 32nd and range line also blowing around a bit in the wind, showing those cloudy skies as well across the area. And cloudy, cold, breezy from the KDOT camera 69 just south of Pittsburgh. Our camera 7th and range line, cloudy for sure, 32 in Joplin. Feels like 22. The west breeze at 14, gusting to 28 miles an hour out there. And temperatures around the region were still hanging out in the low 30s across the area. Not a lot of movement thanks to the cloud cover, but unfortunately it's still quite cold. And you factor in the winds and something's not quite right somewhere. And I'm not sure where, but this is showing wind chills in the teens across the area. Either way you paint it, it is still very cold out there with those winds gusting upwards of 30 to 35 miles an hour. All right, we get our morning started. Cloudy, breezy, 34 by 11. So that's what I mean. These temperatures not really moving a lot as we go through the morning hours. As we head into the afternoon, at least one piece of good news, the winds are going to start to ease up. The later into the afternoon and evening and overnight hours we go, the less, you know, the less strong, less gusty the winds are. It'll be considerably calmer tonight. However, we're not going to be very warm. We're about 20 degrees cooler today than where we were yesterday, only making about 45. Some of us may even get a few peaks of sunshine out there, so we'll go mostly cloudy heading into the afternoon. We will remain mostly cloudy into the evening hours as well. I will have some gradual clearing overnight, go partly cloudy at 28. So widespread frost is a concern tonight and tomorrow night. So if you've got any of those plants and probably already blooming out there with the nice weather we've had up till now, you might want to cover them or bring them inside if you can. As we head into our Wednesday across the area, we're a little warmer, 55, partly cloudy skies. However, we're still a little below average out there and we're going to fall down to 32 tomorrow night, but it doesn't last long. Again, warm weather returns. We're going to be pushing close to 80 degrees heading into the weekend. So Easter Sunday, if you're doing some Easter egg hunts, make sure you dress appropriately to be outdoors, but also keep an eye to the sky. We have another system rolling in. Going to bring us some shower and thunderstorm chances Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. In addition to that, it is also going to bring us cooler temperatures as we head into Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of next week. So something else to keep in mind. We're, we're in that transition phase, as you know, here in the four states between our two seasons of winter into, uh, into summer. 
And so we're going to have some cool spots here and there, but otherwise a nice weekend ahead of us. That is a check of your forecast. We'll be back with more of the KOAM morning news right after this. Dr. Shelby Roman and Monette for a personal protection review. Well, a nonprofit organization in Washington is using guitars to help children stay away from violence. Fox's Dave Detling takes us there to learn more on how they are doing this. Everybody got picks still? It's guitar tune-up time at Seattle's Miller Community Center in Capitol Hill. Play an E chord. You're in tune. A dozen kids from all backgrounds are completing their eighth and final week of guitar lessons. This finger here. There you go. Perfect. Instructor Jack Ballad leads the group. And that goes there. He's part of Guitars Not Guns. Play that D. A nonprofit organization that puts instruments in the hands of kids in and around Seattle. We're clearly anti-gun violence and what we're doing is in a little way providing some alternate positive thing the music acts as a deterrent showing king county kids they can master any talent we have given them something other than just shucks let's go down the street and see what on the street corner. Remembering the chords because I'm really good at bad at remembering stuff. That's the toughest part is learning the F chord. An added bonus, these guitars once on loan to the kids are now theirs to keep. A gift for completing eight weeks of guitar lessons. Oh, it's ha I'm happy. I'm really excited and I'm also happy my parents still have to pay for this. For parents, they see this guitar program as a win for their kids' emotional and social well-being, occupying their time with a positive musical outlet. We have time to do good. We don't have time to be doing bad. All right, not bad. Well, certainly a unique program and, yes. and th something that helps the kids. And that's the most important thing is you got to keep kids away from violence. Great to see and so unique too. What a what a unique take on just, you know, keeping kids safe. Absolutely. I, I, it's it's tougher to do these days. I mean, it really when, is. when I was younger, I'd run around the city and freely. And off the phones but, too. Yeah, but yeah. for 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 me as a parent yeah. today, it's a little bit of a scarier world out Absolutely. there. And, and, and I don't know if it's perception because I ran around Joplin frequently. I don't think Joplin is a dangerous community, but I don't want my kids running out of yeah. sight of me from the house. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't know. Maybe Absolutely. it's just we're just weirdly know, overly totally protective these days. I'm not sure. Well, coming up, spring elections are around the corner. We will show you why it's important to know what electioneering is and how to stay away from it. And we've got ourselves a cloudy and cold day out there. We'll have another look at your forecast when we come back. The four states most watched news starts now. Welcome back to the KOA Morning News on Fox 14. It's currently 727. I'm Elise Snowy. A tractor trailer grain hauler folds in Jasper County and blocks a roadway yesterday morning. It happened about 715. The crash happened on Chapel Road and a driftwood lane. According to officials, a vehicle swerved into the truck lane and caused the trailer driver to strike a culvert. The collapse spilled a small amount of corn on the road. The USDA has been contacted regarding the 53,000 pounds of corn for livestock. There are no reported injuries. The Downtown Joplin Alliance put out the call on Facebook yesterday for, quote, developers and innovators in reference to the Joplin Union Depot. Solicitations are now being sought for redevelopment of this historic piece of Joplin's past that has sat vacant for decades. Interested parties or developers have until May 31st to submit their solicitation of interest. We have more information on our website, koemnewsnow.com, including how to download your own solicitation of interest packet. Yesterday, the Arvest Foundation granted $25,000 to the new community ride system in southwest Missouri. The Economic Security Corporation began CARS, or Community Action Ride System, in response to the loss of the trolley system in the area. The program will serve Barton, Jasper, Newton, and McDonald counties in Missouri. 
volunteer drivers are encouraged to participate. So CARS is still set to launch in May. Um, we're actually holding a community event in April to sort of celebrate that launch in Landreth Park so people can come out, they can learn more about how to schedule a ride. If they're interested in volunteering, we can sign them up for it, all to get ready for that May launch. For more information, including signing up for this service or volunteering to drive, head on over to our website. Of course, that's koamnewsnow.com. The Missouri Department of Conservation wants to remind people to leave wild baby animals alone. Chances are if you encounter a wild baby animal it's in its natural setting, the parent isn't too far away. While the inclination is to do a good deed, experts say interacting with a baby animal is one of the worst things people can do. I know the internet is full of tales of, of stories about how people may have raised baby squirrels or baby birds or baby whatever. But there are also a lot of stories that didn't make the internet. And those are stories that ended with the death of the young. Experts say trust the parent of the baby animal to know what it's doing. Well, as election season heats up, it's important to understand the rules and regulations. According to Missouri state statute, electioneering is not allowed within 25 feet of polling sites, meaning no clothing, buttons or signs promoting a political candidate or and stance. If you happen to be wearing a shirt that breaks electioneering rules, poll workers will ask you to change or turn the shirt inside out. Jasper County Clerk Charlie Davis says these rules don't just apply to what's on the day's ballot. But one of the other things that people don't think about is uh, electioneering might not be just for this election. This is an April municipal election. So if there are people that are coming up uh, on the ballot in August or November, that covers those as well. Missouri's municipal election date is April 2nd. There are items on the ballot in all southwest Missouri counties. There's also an election in Oklahoma that day. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis signs a bill banning social media accounts for children under 14 at a signing ceremony yesterday. Governor DeSantis notes the bill is not restricting freedom of speech, but is instead trying to keep children away from the harmful, addictive features of social media platforms. Under the bill, children 14 and under will not be allowed to have a social media account and teens 15 and 16 years old will need parental permission to open one. The bill, which is expected to be challenged, goes into effect January 1st of 2025. And we've got ourselves a cold, cloudy and breezy start to the day. This is the Modoc camera 32nd and range line in Joplin. Looking back to the west, it's been swaying in the breeze on occasion. Some good news at least, the winds will calm down late this afternoon into the evening and overnight. But between now and then, it is cold. 32 in Joplin, 32 in Pittsburgh right now as well. Temperatures around the region in the low 30s. And they've been hovering there all morning long. And we're not expecting a lot of movement as we go through the morning. Wind chill values hanging out in the teens across the area for most of us and some 20s here and there. We are going to eventually make it to about 45 for a high. So we're going to be about 20 degrees cooler today than what we were yesterday. We'll spend the majority of the first half of our, well, we'll spend the first half of our day rather cloudy. Then we'll start to see a few peaks of sunshine here and there and start to go mostly cloudy as we head into the afternoon and evening. We do have concerns about widespread frost tonight and tomorrow night. So if you've got some outdoor plants, maybe you can cover them or bring them in. It is going to warm back up though, which is good news. We'll tell you when that's going to happen and what that warm up looks like with your full forecast here a little later. Elise. All right, thanks, Chris. And that's a look at our top news stories coming up this half hour on the KOM Morning News. A nonprofit is sponsoring veterans to visit memorials around the country. There's nothing better than the delightful... Do You're an owner, setting up the future for the ones you love. That's the value of ownership. Welcome back to the KOM Morning News. Again, our good friend, uh, good friend Charlene Patton from the Kansas Soybean Commission joining us all the way from Topeka. Whoa, 
Let's see. <laughs> We're starting this off rough here. I'm going to end up making a giant mess. So I'm going to kind of back up a bit. But Charlene has been bringing some fantastic recipes because it's been a very special month here in the state of Kansas. It is. It is um, National Agriculture Month. It is um, National uh, Bake and Take Month. And then we're also in the week of Easter because Easter's early this year. It is. We have a wonderful blueberry banana coffee cake. Okay. So you, it will actually make 12 servings. It is so moist. You'll love this recipe. It's easy to make. So you can take it to, uh, if you're going somewhere for Easter dinner, take it to your host as a gift. Okay. You can slice it into pieces and give it to your neighbors as a bake and take and say hello. So lots of good reasons and we're celebrating agriculture too. All right. All right. So what I've done here is that I have mixed the uh, sugar and margarine, which is another uh, soy ingredient okay. and then I put in there's three eggs in this recipe and I put them in one at a time so you can see it's nice and creamy and now you're going to add the banana okay. and that is a mashed banana and it's a half a cup I believe yes of a mashed banana All right. and then we have a cup of soy sour cream and one of the things that we haven't talked about let me help you with that is that a lot of people will look to soy for um, if they're allergic to dairy products. Okay. So if you can't use, or if you're sensitive to lactose, these ingredients would give you a wonderful alternative um, to help you so you can still do great baking. Okay. Yeah. All right, and then you have our dry ingredients, which is two cups of flour. Um, we have baking powder, baking soda in there, and okay. a little bit of salt. You mix that all together, and I'm going to mix this. And then you're going to add half of it into this mixture. And the reason that we're doing that is really just a way of blending the green in without over-mixing. Okay. So you go ahead and add half of that. <clears throat> and it's just a ballpark. You just okay. shake some in there. And it doesn't have to be exact. Great. And yeah, then <clears throat> on half right there, yeah. I think. And then on top of that, I'm going to put half of the blueberries. Okay. And that we've talked about this before, but that really separates them. Kind of coats them so that they're not all in one place. Now okay. you can add the rest of the flour. Okay. <clears throat> Great. There we go. And I'm going to add the rest of the blueberries. And that is um, two cups of blueberries. Okay. So there is blueberries in every bite. We're going to bake this in a bunt pan, grease that, and then you might want to lightly coat it with flour. So pour that into your bunt pan and you bake it at 50, 350 degrees for about um, 50 minutes use a wooden pick to make sure look at that you've got blueberries oh, yeah. all the way Everywhere. through that and then you let it set for about 10 15 minutes when it comes out of the oven so it cools and then it'll just pop right out and look at all those blueberries in every oh, yeah, bite and i've here. given you some there that you can try we've got this right here and yeah take a look there and then the right here too look at all of those uh blueberries in there She's not kidding. It's going to be in every single slice of this. <laughs> so let's give this a try. Let's see what we've got here. And then I also took a little bit of glaze, just a, a white vanilla glaze there, powdered sugar, and drizzled it on the top just to make it a little fancy for Easter. And it's very moist, not dry at no. all. And that's delicious. So, Good. of course, if folks want this amazing recipe or any of the other fantastic recipes you brought us this month, where do they need to go? They should go to kansassoybeans.org or call our 800 number, 877-KS-SOYBEAN. Megan might be answering the phone up there today and just ask her to send you the recipes. All right, Charlene, thank you so much. And, of course, we'll have all of this on our website as well, koamnewsnow.com. Um, we'll be back with more of the KOAM Morning News right after this. Indigo Scout Code Family Fun on checkout. Visit JoplinCircus.com. That's JoplinCircus.com. We'll see you there.
Welcome back to the KOM Morning News 742. Now on this Tuesday morning, it is cloudy, it is cold, it is breezy. That is everything about today all rolled into one. That's all you need to know. But you need some specifics, so I'll give those to you as well. Our camera on the Cordell Complex downtown Joplin. It is cloudy looking out there. Same from the Modoc camera. 32nd and range line looking back to the west. Plenty of folks getting their day underway, and I guarantee you every last one of them have the heat turned on, maybe for the first time in a little while. KDOT camera 69 south of Pittsburgh. Also looking pretty good, except for those clouds, and they're not going to go anywhere for a little while. Cloudy in Joplin, 32, feeling like 22. West wind at 14, gusting upwards of 28 miles an hour out there. Temperatures around the region, still not a lot of movement, low to mid thirties out there, and they're not going to move a lot as we go through the morning either with the cloud cover out there kind of acting like a blanket. I am starting to believe that there might be something wrong with this particular map. I think it's going a little too cold on these wind chills. I could be incorrect, um, but we're otherwise still wind chills, upper teens, even lower 20s out there. It doesn't matter what this map says. It feels much colder than what it really is. Cloudy skies through the morning, breezy as well. 34, so you can see those temperatures not really moving too much out there. As we head into the afternoon, we'll finally do two things. One, we'll see a few peaks of sunshine here and there. Two, we're going to see the winds begin to gradually ease up around the area as well, and they'll be relatively calm comparatively as we head into the overnight. Mostly cloudy skies by this afternoon. Highs about 45, so that's about 20 degrees colder than where we were yesterday for our highs. And then the other concern, as we mentioned earlier, is widespread frost, not just tonight, but tomorrow night. I know with the nice warm weather, a lot of plants out there in bloom. So if you've got some you can cover up or bring inside, I definitely recommend that, especially if they're sensitive to the frost. Mostly cloudy through the evening, gradual clearing overnight, partly cloudy, and we'll fall back into the upper 20s. As for our Wednesday, we'll actually start the day mostly clear, and then we'll be mostly clear to partly cloudy through the day. A little warmer, still not where we should be, but better, mid-50s out there, and then 32 for that low. That's why we have that widespread frost concern one more night out there. As we look across the rest of the week, things start to look better. We're pushing close to 80 as we head into Easter weekend, and then we've got another system moving in late Sunday into Monday and Tuesday, bringing us more chances for showers and thunderstorms, and after it rolls through Tuesday, it will also bring us cooler temperatures once again out there, so enjoy the weekend and the end of this week as well as we warm up because we'll have another chilly round as we head into the next work week. That is a check of your forecast. Now we're going to Send it over to Elise with Consumer Watch. All right, thanks, Chris. Well, a group of 18 states is urging the IRS to scrap a taxpayer funded tax filing program. Some top financial officers from the states say the IRS's direct file program is wasteful and flawed. They argue it could lead to penalties for users who are not aware of additional filing requirements. The agency's filing initiative has faced criticism for its limited scope and potential to mislead users, particularly lower income tax Taxpayers. The program excludes tax, state tax returns and offers a minimal customer support. Direct file is estimated to cost roughly $2.5 billion over the next 10 years. Dairy cows in multiple states test positive for bird flu. The Texas Animal Health Commission says the virus is affecting cattle in Texas, Kansas and New Mexico. Officials say a bird flu is causing a decreased lactation and appetite among the cows. The Department of Agriculture says the current commercial milk supply is safe to drink because dairies are not allowed to sell milk from sick animals. The agency also says there is no concern for consumers as the risk of the virus is very low. Dollar Tree is keeping its name, but it's raising its max price on some items. The discount store chain says it will offer items for up to $7 as its stores. Some of the highest priced items will include food and pet supplies. Customers can also expect stores to start offering various sizes of products at different prices as well. A report says Dollar Tree last raised its cap to $5 last June. And those are our top consumer watch stories. Let's take a look at the pri market prices before the opening bell. The 
world is a great big place. It should be. Your time matters. KOAM News at 9 on Fox 14. Simply more convenient. Well, some veterans got the chance to go to Washington, D.C. to see the memorials honoring their service during the Vietnam and Cold Wars. Fox's Amanda Ruiz has more. 48 Vietnam War and Cold War veterans marched down the terminal at Austin Bergstrom International Airport to embark on a trip of a lifetime. I'm really excited seeing all these uh, fine gentlemen around me and some gals that are going to Washington. Marco Cardon served in the Vietnam War. He is one of the vets heading to Washington, D.C. with Honor Flight Austin to visit the memorials that honor his service. And um, I have names I like to look up. Those names, his friends he lost serving in the military. In June, from, from the spring of 1972 to the summer, the unit fought a really large battle in a town called Anlock, which is being attacked by the North Vietnamese. And we lost um, eight pilots in a very short time. Stories like Marco's are just one of the many Nancy Maxwell says she looks forward to hearing on this honor flight trip. Her family is sponsoring the trip, something they have been doing here and there since 2015. People are thanking us, but this is us thanking them for their service, their sacrifice. She says the most important part of this trip is just showing these vets they're appreciated. It gives us so much joy. It, it, it kind of gives me sadness when they say this is the first time anyone's thanked me. Um, and especially when crowds thank them and all. Um, it just breaks my heart. But I am so glad that we are here to be able to do that for them and give them that, that they are finally getting after so many years. Amanda Ruiz, Fox 7 Austin News. It's great to see those veterans honored in such a way. I mean, even just the look on some of their faces, they were truly taking it in. It's great. Oh, absolutely. And yeah, especially for some of those Vietnam veterans, you know, when absolutely. they first returned, they were not greeted right. so well back yes. at that time. And, and it's great to see them get the, the honor and recognition that absolutely. they certainly deserve out certainly. there. And it's uh, going to be a cold one across the area today. One more quick look outside. This is uh, our camera on top of the Cornell Complex downtown Joplin. It is cloudy. It is breezy. And as mentioned, it is cold. MoDOT camera, 32nd in range line, looking back to the west. And as you can see, nothing but clouds. And it's going to remain cloudy as we get through the morning out there. Sitting at 32 in Joplin, 30 in Pittsburgh right now and temperatures around the region still hanging out in the low to mid 30s out there. There's not really been a lot of movement. The clouds, as we've mentioned, kind of act like a blanket. Unfortunately, they blanketed in some cold temperatures behind that front, but they're not really moving a lot, nor are they expected to. Wind chills again. I think this map something may be wrong with the data coming into it. I know wind chills are low. I don't think they're quite that low. We're talking upper teens and low twenties out there, but it has been very breezy this morning as well. As we go through the morning and the first half of our day, cloudy, cold, we'll eventually see a few peaks of sunshine going mostly cloudy heading into the afternoon and into the evening hours out there. And we're going to be about 20 degrees colder today than what we were yesterday. Only about 45 for our high uh, across the area today. Now the good news is as we head in the afternoon and evening, the winds will begin to ease up and they'll be considerably calmer as we go overnight. The other concern though tonight, just a quick reminder, widespread frost tonight and tomorrow night. So if you've got some outdoor plants that are already in bloom, if you can cover them up or maybe bring them inside, tonight's the night to do that as well as tomorrow night. Well, now look at your forecast and the news you need to know right after this. Welcome to Miss Daisy's, where style meets comfort. Kansas native was part of the 78th Anti-Aircraft Artillery Battalion. We are proud to salute Clifford Birdsong, a four-state hero. Well, here's a check of today's top headlines, the news you need to know before you head out the door. The Kansas State Fire Marshal says a second person has died from last week's apartment fire in Chanute. Officials say 90-year-old Jolivan Haymaker died from severe injuries in the hospital on Saturday. The first is 22-year-old Kaylin Jones, who was found dead at the scene. The fire marshal also determined the cause of the fire to be accidental. Joplin police investigate a deadly shooting they say started with a reported disturbance. It happened just before 10 yesterday morning at Hillbilly Pumping on 1845 Pump Lane. When officers arrived, they found a 37-year-old Travis Wyrick of Joplin dead on the property. No arrests have been made in this case, but Joplin police say there is no threat to the public. 
The Downtown Joplin Alliance put out the call on Facebook yesterday to quote developers and innovators about the Joplin Union Depot. Solicitations are now being sought for the redevelopment of this historic piece of Joplin's past that has sat vacant for decades. Interested parties or developers have until May 31st to submit their solicitation of interest. We got ourselves a cold day out there. 45 for our high going mostly cloudy this afternoon and winds will start to ease up a bit as we go later into the afternoon and evening hours. We'll be mostly cloudy through the evening and of course chilly out there and of course also as mentioned the widespread frost tonight. Upper 20s and some gradual clearing as we uh, go partly cloudy overnight. We'll start our Wednesday mostly clear and then be mostly clear to partly cloudy through the day. A little warmer still below average mid 50s warming up into the weekend. As we go up near 80, then another system Sunday, Monday, Tuesday brings us shower and storm chances and cooler temperatures once again as we head into next week. Don't want any more cooler temperatures. I'm done Chris. with the cold. Me too. All right, thanks, Chris. <laughs> well, in Paris, a 13 year thirst and hunger is over. Time again for friendly competition and service with a smile. A beloved tradition for waiter pros to prove their speed waiting skills is back. Now the rules are simple, no running, no spilling, only one hand on the tray. Contestants hustled a croissant, cup of coffee and a glass of water for 1.2 miles. Winners got great foodie outings and tickets to this year's Summer Olympics opening ceremony. And I've seen some waiters do some incredible yeah. things at, at restaurants that there's uh, no, I could never do that. This, the balance or where they have it like all lined up on one arm. Impressive. Yeah, absolutely. Impressive. <laughs> well, thank you all so much for letting us put the good in your morning. We won't be serving you food anytime soon, but we'll serve you more news and weather at noon. Have a great morning.